Uh, I was a I was a product of Vacation Bible School. I was saved at the age of eight years old during Vacation Bible School, and so it's always had a big place in my heart. But I think many times we we think we have to come up with something new. Uh, Vacation Bible School, you know, I, I think it's one of the great opportunities that sometimes we miss if we if we're not doing it because generally during the summer the kids are getting bored and parents were looking for a place to send them. And so you take that opportunity to bring them in and, and teach them the Word of God and you have the crafts and you have the refreshments and all of those things, but then you still have the Bible study time and you still have the evangelistic time. We give an evangelic, evangelistic emphasis uh, throughout our Vacation Bible School. We, we don't just save it for one day. We, we purposely go through ahead of time before the, the Vacation Bible School starts and we train each one of our teachers and workers in how to lead a child to Christ. And uh, it's not that we're trying to manipulate them or, 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 or sway them in some way, but, but we want to just share with them <clears throat> ideas of how they can reach that young person on, a, on an age-appropriate level. Talk to us specifically about a, uh, how are you presenting the gospel? You said you do that oftentimes. You share that throughout the week and not just on one single night, uh, you know, like a parent's night yeah. or something of that sort or family night. Uh, how are you doing that? What are you doing? Well, in our, in our, in our Bible study time, we, we've tried to take and, and work through those ahead of time with each of the teachers uh, so that they kind of take it with an evangelistic appeal to it and that they give those children an opportunity to respond in the class. Uh, and um, we make sure that they're familiar with, we, we typically use the ABCs, admit, believe, and commit. Uh, and, and so we kind of work those into the Bible study. We work it into the recreation, uh, missions, whatever our different classes are that we're using, we, we try to work that into each one of them so that it's uh, being used and, and, and given that opportunity on a, on a regular basis throughout the week. Yeah, that's, that's great. I was thinking back uh, uh, about all the years I did vacation Bible school for decades uh, in doing that, and we did much, much the very same thing. Uh, let me ask you this. Do you guys continue to have like a joint worship service at the beginning or the end of your vacation Bible school time, or have you done away with that? I know some churches, because of time, they stopped doing that. We still do. Uh, we, we typically start ours with a joint worship, and then we actually bring them back in at the end and uh, usually do like one song with them, and then we'll give them announcements and stuff for the next day and trying to build that encouragement for them to come back the next day. Um, and so it, it, we still see it as a, as a viable tool to keep using. You know, when I was a, a pastor and church planter, we did this when I was a church planter as well. One of the things we did, I, I, I would absolutely not want to cut out the joint time. And one of the main reasons was not, not so much for me to be able to be in front of the kids, uh, although I always wanted that to connect with those kids and their families. But we used that time to present the gospel every day. Yes. Uh, to understand how to meet Jesus. Now, you mentioned using the, the ABC approach. I, I've, I've right. done that. Uh, I did a poster presentation, uh, you know, a number of different times over the years, you know, showing pictures of with my, yeah, it's it's a sad yeah. story. We won't talk about my <laughs> drawing, but anyway, but the kids always laugh. They thought that was sure. Uh, uh, do you remember Faith Sunday School Evangelism that was big out of life yes. a while back? Yeah. You have faith and you have the five fingers. Uh, that's the one uh, that worked the best. But let me tell you how I used my evangelistic okay, presentation. Okay, that'd be great. At the first of the week, you know, when we met on Monday, or sometimes we start on Sunday night, you know, we start on Sunday night. At the beginning of the week, we just started real simple. Maybe that first night uh, at the end of whatever my presentation was, you know, we'd have some songs and all that kind of thing, a few announcements. And I would do a, a kind of a, a sermonette, you know, kind of a deal, maybe. Sure. But during that time, the first night, I would just say, I want to show you exactly how uh, you can know Jesus Christ personally. And I'd go through the one, two, you know, ABC, well, it's not ABC, it's F-A-I-T-H for the faith presentation. Uh, and I would just share, but I wouldn't share all the illustrations. I wouldn't quote all the scriptures so much at the beginning. It's just very simple. Then the second night, I'd come in and say, now, guys, do you remember what word I used last night on my fingers? 
And of course, most of them would, you know, well, yeah, it was yeah. faith. Oh, yeah. faith. F -A -I -D. Okay. Well, let's start with the thumb. Do you know what the thumb stands for? The F stands for forgiveness, forgiveness. Okay. Say that with me. And I'd, I'd get them to talk it through. And then I would share, you know, a scripture on forgiveness or tell a story about forgiving and how God forgave us or, or something. And that was the first night. Then the second night, come back and say, guys, do you remember what we did last time? Yep. Okay. Now we're going to add this F A A stands for, and then each night we would add a finger and I would add a little bit more to the illustration. Well, here's the reason it works so well, because the last day of vacation Bible school, the kids could tell me the whole thing. They could right. walk through the whole thing. And so I say, okay, guys, you've got to help me tell people how to know to accept Jesus. Okay. So here, let's look at this. Now, guys, help me out. What's this stand for? F, that's right. And that stands for faith. I mean, stands for forgiveness for, for the word faith stands for forgiveness. And then we would walk right through and they wouldn't have memorized all the scriptures per se, that kind of thing, but they'd remember uh, stories and they remembered exactly what the, the pattern was, uh, the things you have to do. And so when it came to our family night, then instead of me standing up and saying, okay, folks, I'm going to preach this little mini sermon or whatever, by this time, the kids who had already sung and they'd done other things uh, for the congregation, they had gone back to sit with their parents. They were sitting all over the congregation by now. And so I would say, now, moms and dads and friends, here's what we're going to do. Your kids who are sitting all around you, they're going to help tell exactly how we know Jesus. Okay, guys, you ready? Yeah, and they'd scream, say, yeah. I said, okay, so when we hold up our hand like this, what does that stand for? What word? And they'd say faith. And then I say, okay, well, what's the F? Forgiveness. Very good. And forgiveness reminds us of, and yeah, and then, and we would literally go through the entire presentation, take, you know, eight or 10 minutes or so, still fairly short, and get to the end, you know, wrap it up how we were going to wrap it up and go home and more parents would come to me and say that was so neat that was so great that your kids you know uh that i mean you helped the kids and the kids were able to do that and you just yeah. involved them that was super but that wasn't my strategy my thinking for doing that was this i'm not the kind of guy that pushes real hard for kids to make a decision vacation Bible school, revival, any other time. I'm not going to scare them to death. I'm not going to guilt them to death. I'm not going to put them up against the fiery furnaces of hell. I, I, I'm right, not. Right. Okay. But I want them to have an understanding because I believe we come as a child, but coming as a child means we have a basic understanding. We don't have to have all yeah. the theological stuff down, but we have a basic understanding. So my strategy was there will be, and there almost always were, some kids who were old enough and understood well enough who made decisions during that week because yeah. only in addition to what I did in the group time, the worship time, we did just like you're talking about uh, each of your classes, you know, they, they would talk about the ABCs or something like that. You know, we had missionaries that would visit, they would tell, you know, so lots of other ways, but this was a way they could remember. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. Most of those kids are not making a decision. And we're not forcing them. We're not pushing them. We're right. not trying to. Okay. And so my thinking was if every kid or at least most every kid who has attended our vacation Bible school can next week find themselves at school somewhere else with some friends and the topic of going to church or Jesus comes up, they remember F A I T H. Or when I used the poster, they remembered the pictures that represented. Right. Or when I used ABC, A, admit, believe, you know, I mean, yeah. they remembered. Yeah. Um, and they couldn't present the gospel with all scriptures and everything else, but didn't need to. Right. For some of them, it was a personal matter. At yep. some point, they were in their bedroom, and they started thinking back on that. And it could have been months or even years later. Uh, and I wanted them to have this in their mind. I remember when I went to vacation Bible school. Uh, I know how I can know Jesus, you know, in a personal relationship. So uh, like you, we always tried really hard to make our vacation Bible school evangelistic without any doubt. Now, let's talk real quick as we wrap it up uh, about that kind of family night you would do at the end of, of your vacation Bible school. I kind of spilled the beans on some of what we would do, but what That's kind of things did. did you do? Okay. What kind of other things did you do to get people there, to get parents to come? Did you do, you know, a meal? Did you do a reception? I mean, what kind of things might you have done? Or we, do, have we, done? We, we typically do a meal. 
uh, and we typically uh, we'll, we'll give out some awards and things to the kids on that night for different things throughout the week that are hopefully going to encourage parents to come because the kids are wanting to come. And then we also, um, we take and let the kids perform at least one song for each age group or something, and then maybe quote some scripture, uh, you know, that they've prepared throughout the week or that they've been learning throughout the week. And we let them bring that. And so the parents are excited to come in. Because I think one of the one of the opportunities that we miss a lot of times is if we're not careful, we think vacation Bible school is just about reaching the kids, but it's an, also an opportunity to reach parents and the families. Absolutely. And so uh, we're always trying to make that one of our biggest connection points uh, throughout the year for the people in our community, and especially of those kids that have been attending. And so we uh, we've sometimes we've done a giveaway. Uh, we generally, our VBS director and maybe me or somebody else will have some kind of competition between us that's going on. And so one of us is getting a pie in the face or a bucket of water dumped on our head or something, you know, that the kids won't really want to see and be a part of. And I think one year I had to eat crickets. Um, ooh, ooh, yeah, it was, at least they were dried. Um, yeah, well, there's some, there, some countries eat crickets a lot, but I'm just yeah, they, they called me John the Baptist after that for a while. Well, um, I, I, but, I must say we ate parakeet when I was in Myanmar one time, so uh, I guess I shouldn't complain about crickets. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it, it wasn't too bad. It, it yeah. kind of stuck with you for a while, but, you know, I'm it sure. was worth it to see the, you know, the number of people that we had there. Another thing that we did is typically um, a lot of times what we'd done is vacation Bible school Monday through Friday, and then you'd have family night either on Saturday or Sunday. Well, what we found is that Saturday and Sunday usually wasn't a good attendance night for adults. Mm. So we have scaled ours back to where we do vacation Bible school Monday through Thursday. And then we do our family night on Friday night. And uh, we, like I said, we provide a meal. We, we send out flyers throughout the week, letting the parents know about it ahead of time. And we don't wait till Thursday. We, we start sending those out early in the week. So that hopefully they can plan on being off work on time and, and be able to be there and uh, really try to encourage them to, to come and to be there. And then we try to have our people ready to connect with them, uh, to find, find a family that, that they don't know, a family that they don't recognize, and to just walk up and, and to begin to try to build that relationship with them. So it's, it's, it's important to have that commencement night or family night or, or whatever you might call it. Yeah, let me ask you a little bit about the, the awards. I think that's a great idea if uh, churches aren't already doing that uh, because parents will come if their kid's getting something, you know. Yeah. Uh, so what kinds of things have you used? Uh, and and I, I don't want to know all the categories because you can do all kinds of things sure. for that. But sure. uh, I'll just give, give one example. You know, uh, uh, one time we were giving out uh, ribbons, not to everybody, but a good number of them would get a ribbon for something that was achieved. What other kinds of things would you possibly give to uh, the kids? Well, we, we do some different type themes each night. And so we'll typically give something to them that kind of fits with that theme. Like if they do crazy sock night, well, we'll, we'll get, award them with a, a pair of crazy socks at the end of the week, you know. Oh, that's good, yeah. Uh, if it's, uh, if it's you know, we've had hat night or something, we may give them a hat that has our logo on it. Uh, but we, we try to find things that connect with what we're encouraging them to do through the week that, that we can award them with on, the, on, the, on that family night. Uh, we also, you know, we, we do a participation award, a, a course for everybody, just kind of a little pamphlet, but that's not the one they typically come after. Uh, now, we usually give one for if, if somebody brought the most friends or visitors throughout the week. We usually find some way to award them with something. And then if we've got some that uh, give their life to Christ during the week, we try to present them with the Bible on, uh, on that Friday night. Yeah, so just, just all kinds, all kinds yeah, of no, different no, no, things. That's, that's good. Yeah, no, 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 that's good. And and really, again, uh, this is a brain power moment. I mean, this is a time sure. where people get together, teachers, because if you're anything like me, uh, you know, we're fairly creative in our own world, but uh, there's some teachers that are just off the chart, you know, in our yes. churches, and uh, they can really help come up with some creative ideas for awards and presentations and oh, yeah, uh, absolutely. fun stuff. Yeah, because the objective at that point 
is uh, is to be able to have a good time in Jesus. Yeah, you absolutely, know? absolutely. Uh, and and really for the families, for them to grasp, man, this was pretty good. This was fun. Yeah. It, it wasn't what they imagined it being stiff and boring and you know exactly. all that kind of thing. And uh, and then of course from that, how do you use Vacation Bible School as a funnel to get these people? You've already mentioned encourage your people to connect with people, you know, right. on the family night, that kind of thing. But what else do you do to help funnel them into your church, into your Bible study hour? I mean, what what are you doing then? We, uh, we try to, you know, we'll, we'll go through and we'll figure out who the prospects are. If we've got somebody that's already going to another Sunday school or something, we, we don't, you know, go after them or anything like that. We try to stick to those that are unchurched. But what we do is uh, we try to connect the vacation Bible school teacher with the regular Sunday school teacher and get them to do a follow-up visit in the home, uh, you know, within that following week so that they can kind of meet the kids and get to know them. And then they can begin to build that relationship with the parents and things. Uh, we also make sure that on our family night that we, we let the parents know that we have a, uh, a van program where we can come and pick the kids up and, and those kind of things. And we uh, started just last year introducing our children's Sunday school teachers at the family night on Friday night. That way, the parents have a picture of who it is their child would be with on a, on a Sunday morning. Oh, that's and, a great uh, idea. And, and they can actually come meet them at the family. Yes. Night. Yeah, that's super. Yeah. Yeah. We've, we've just tried to figure out all kinds of ways that we can make it, take away any excuse that might be there to keep them from coming. We're trying to make it as open and, and just as be as receptive as we can to people so that they, they feel safe in coming and they feel interested in coming because, Hey, these people really do care and things. Uh, yep. But besides just that first week, one of the things that we do is if we continue to try to connect them throughout the year, uh, we, we keep them on a, on a prospect list until they join a, a Sunday school class. And, and we've already, when we, we connect them to a Sunday school class immediately if they're a prospect. And we leave it up to that teacher and those workers in, in that particular class to go and to reach out uh, to those prospects that they'd got from Vacation Bible School. It's all stuff that's been done. You know, yeah. it's it's one of those things of just uh, not trying to change the world and make something brand new, but just, right. just taking what's there, a tool that's been right. used for numerous years, uh, and just use it to the best of our ability and make it our own. You don't have to do it, you know, just exactly like a book or something says. you you got to build it and make it your own to fit your uh, set of circumstances that you're in. Uh, I was a... I was a product of Vacation Bible School. I was saved at the age of eight years old during Vacation Bible School, so it's always had a big place in my heart, but I think many times we, we think we have to come up with something new, and uh, a lot of the old tools worked really well. We just have to maybe modernize them a little bit and, and go on and use them, and, and just a lot of the principles behind them work, even if maybe the, the style and stuff doesn't work anymore, and so we can we can use what's what's already been invented and use it well.